Hi, today we're gonna talk about the probability distribution of a discrete random variable. From our previous lesson, we have discussed what is a random variable and we found out that random variables could either be discrete or continuous. For this discussion, we're gonna focus on the discrete random variable and look deeper into it by discussing the probability distribution of a discrete random variable. To start this discussion, we're gonna present you some problems that you find some dilemma in. Let's suppose that on your way home, gangsters were waiting for To give a solution to this dilemma, we're gonna ask more questions. So what is a probability distribution? A probability distribution just describes how the possible outcomes are distributed. More identical outcomes means more probability and more concentrated data on a certain place. Graphically, this can be thought of how these bars in the screen are placed. This is a high mean and low mean probability distribution or spread out or concentrated distribution or data is concentrated on the right negatively skewed or the opposite to the left positively skewed or there are outliers or few outliers on the data. For now, you do not need to understand these terms, but those are the graphical representations of the probability distribution. Probability distribution could be found by considering two things, the possible outcomes and the frequency of each outcome. Possible outcomes are the entities you get after a random process and the frequency of which is just the number that these certain outcomes have occurred. We're gonna start with a fairly simple example, a single coin toss, a standard example, which could either be heads or a tails. In this case, we have two possible outcomes and moving on to fairly more complex but Still, this example is a two coin toss. There are four possible outcomes both the heads or both tails, or first coin could be head, second tail, or the opposite. A more complex example is a three coin toss. This is the combination of three random processes of throwing a single coin. To easily create in your mind what are the possible outcomes, it's easy to complement each outcome to something. For example, three heads is the complement of three tails, or two heads first then tail is the complement of two tails and head. Doing this would lead us to find out that there are eight possible outcomes for this random process. But as we have seen here, identifying each of the outcome takes time. And doing this from scratch would just be inefficient. And in order to solve this, we introduce a tree diagram. A tree diagram is a graphical way to find out the possible outcomes by making branches. Each layer here represents the number of coins tossed as it relates in the previous example. It starts out by the possible outcomes for a single coin, which is heads and a tail, and the following heads and tail branches out from the previous heads or previous tails. The yellow paths are representing the possible outcomes, which are listed in the right corner. And in total, for this experiment, there are 16 possible outcomes. 
and if you're just concerned of what is the number of total outcomes this could be done easily by multiplying the possible outcomes for each single coin throw which in this case is just equal to 2 to the power of number of coins which is just 4 and out of curiosity we're going to rearrange these possible outcomes into groups where each group represents the number of heads that are contained in each of the outcomes therefore there's only one outcome that contains four heads four that contains three heads or six that contains two heads and so on this will be useful in our posting discussions now we're going to talk about the frequency and we're going to illustrate this using balls for that we imagine a chest it contains three colored balls in it red blue and yellow you are blindfolded and tasked to draw one ball from it what is the probability that you draw this written color of ball imagine that chest to be these blocks below is the number of balls represented on bar graphs as the number of balls increases, the value of the bar graph also increases. Which in this case, we have 4 yellow balls, 3 blue balls, and 5 red balls. This is, in fact, their frequency. And you can call this their frequency distribution. Which greatly resembles a probability distribution as shown on the right. And you may wonder, how do we get these probabilities? So it's just the frequency over the total outcomes, or in simple terms, the number of blue balls over the total number of balls, if you want to find out the probability of getting a blue ball. And if you sum all of this together, you would always get an answer of 1. Probability of getting a red, probability of getting a blue or yellow, is equal to 1 when added together. And to finally solve your problems with the Mafia Boss, we're going to look back at what we did earlier, where we group the possible outcomes into the number of heads that are contained in each of the group. And we basically get some numbers from there, which are 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1 corresponding to the groups listed below. Or in a table, you will find out that these are just the frequency of these outcomes that we are concerned of. And the way we arrange them just greatly resemble what their frequency distribution would look like and also their probability distribution where the two heads gets the most probability therefore two heads are better than four three one and none at all so in the problem betting that you get two coins that are facing up after four coin toss a hundred times would just save yourself from the anger of the mafia boss now to add some problems we're gonna find out that discrete probabilities can be in a certain range so we present here a probability distribution from the previous one but the problem is getting at least one head or what is the probability of getting at least one head this is cor corresponding to the blue bars that exist below. Adding the probabilities together, which corresponds to 4 heads, 3 heads, 2 heads, and 1 head, is just the same as saying that you get at least 1 head for these probabilities, which is equals to 15 
over 16. And noticing that it only lacks 1 over 16 to equal into 1. In every probability distribution, the sum of the discrete probabilities is just equal to 1. Which you can use this to subtract and get the same result by using the complement probabilities. Here, you have an example or a probability distribution of getting at least 2 heads but not more than 4. And following the same instruction as before, you get 3 eighths plus 1 fourth or the blue bars that are below. And this is for the probability of getting two heads and a three heads, which is a less than four and at least two. Or by using its complement, it's just equals to one minus probability of getting no heads, one head, or four heads, which is equal to five eighths, which is the answer we calculated earlier. Another example is getting at least or getting less than three heads and this is again represented by the blue bars below and adding their values is the probability for this situation or this range of probability and the complement for this is just getting more than three heads or in one way of writing this mathematically is one minus the complement probability or 1 minus the gray probabilities or 1 minus probability of getting 3 heads and probability of getting exactly 4 heads or 11 over 16. Now, this is just one of the examples where probability distribution is very much useful. To sum up our lesson for the day, we knew that the probability distribution is comprised of probabilities of each outcome. We also knew that the probability distribution describes the dispersion of random variable, whether the random variable has outcomes that are evenly spread in larger places or not. And we found out that simple random process like coin can be combined to generate more complex or poor coin process. And the previous example, we can range the probabilities and that the sum of discrete probabilities or the sum of probabilities in a bar or bars in the probability distribution is just equal to 1 always. Thank you for listening.